that in case can be difficult to solve. You want to demonstrate that you can solve it technically and that you understand the business challenge for the end users. The solution you deliver should respond to the questions, but if you can, you should also try to provide some add-on value that you have identified in the case. That is what I'm going to try to demonstrate in this video. Hey guys, my name is Ali and I'm a data analytics manager working in Oslo, Norway. In this video, we're going to load some data into the analysis tool Microsoft Power BI and solve some interview case questions. We will start by breaking down the interview case and then move on to the solutions. That's enough talk, let's jump onto my laptop and take a look at this. So let's start by breaking down this interview case study. So hi Ali, I hope you are doing I hope you are doing well. We are having our quarterly planning and need some inf information about our current product portfolio. So let's just mark this off. This is how often they do this. And this is what they're looking for, their current product portfolio. So we're gonna have to get some product information. First of all, I need a list of our products. So we're gonna mark that off. It is important that we filter out products that are not valid anymore. So that can be a filter. I only want the ones that are from this year and last year. So that's fine. How many did we actually start this year versus last year? Okay, let's take a look at that. Could you help me out with that? We just need the product names the model and the description, preferably in English. So those are the columns that we need to fetch in. The second thing which would really help us out is if we get some data that gives us an idea of what our inventory looks like. What we are focusing on is colors and sizes. So we're talking distribution across those two dimensions or do those two columns, as we need to look at having enough options across our inventory. If you see any alarmingly low numbers, then that would be great to have that pointed out. A last thing is that it would be great to know which product has the highest opportunity of profit given that we actually sell it, of course. Okay, so these are the things that I'm gonna look for. These are the things that I'm gonna think about how I wanna solve using Power BI. So let's jump into Power BI. I have that here. I haven't really done anything so far. And I have my SQL Server database instance. I'm gonna copy the server name and jump back into Power BI. And then I will go to get data to get some data from the SQL Server database. Um, and then, you know, we'll press OK. And now it's going to ask me to connect to the database where I can find the information. Now, as I'm looking for the product information, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for the DIM product. And the database that I'm using is the example database, example database from Microsoft called AdventureWorks. Um, and that is where I'm going to get the information from. So we will load that table into Power BI and then we can use the product information to do whatever it is that we need to do. So now you can see we have some data loaded in. You can see under fields on the right side you have the DIM product table. Now the first question was that they want a list of I believe it was the product name, the description and the model for all of their products that are current and that were started this year or last year. So let's start by getting the columns that we need. So I'm going to make a, I'm going to uh, grab a table, English, uh, let's do product name first. Then we will do the model name and then we will do the description. So that's fine. I have that here. That is good. So the first thing I want to do is I want to make sure that I'm only selecting the products that are currently valid. And this is where you can do some add-on stuff because if they are doing this over and over, um, if we give them a, a slicer or a filter, they can decide for, them, for themselves what it is that they want to see of these products that are listed here. So I will grab the slicer, which is basically a filter in Power BI, add that on the left side, and I will use the status over here. So you can see, you can do current or you can do blank. Blank means that uh, they are, uh, um, they are outdated, while current means that they are valid. So we will save that to valid. And then I wanted to make sure that I want them to be valid, but I only want the ones that have a start date this year or last year. So what can we do then? Let's add the start date to this just to see what we get. So you can see we have <clears throat> the 7th, 2010, since this is a demonstration data set, I don't think there are that many different start dates. 2020. So okay, so it's it's only going to be start dates from this year, but it's fine. We'll just uh, we'll just work with what we have. I'm going to just make this a little bit more condensed. 
Now I can see that the start date has the timing, um, so I will take that away. So I will go to the format and I will make it into a date format. I think that looks a little bit cleaner instead of the timing, you don't need that, so that's nice there. Now if you want to, you can actually, if you go to a new column, you can use a function to turn that date into a year and you can add that as a filter um, if you want to. So let's go start year equals year, start date, and then when I, I'll, I'll grab this previous filter that I have, I'll copy it, control C, control V, paste it in, then I'll put that out under there. So when I now I take the column that I made previously and I drag that in, start year, you can see that now I can actually select which year it is that I want product, products from. So I will leave this at 2020 and the current. So these are the current products from that was started this year or last year and since I only have a product in this demo database that started this year, this is the, the, the result to question one. Now what is the business add-on value here is that they can go in and they can select for themselves um, if they want a different start year or if they want to show the products that were actually um, uh, not valid also during uh, uh, with a start, uh, start uh, date uh, in the previous year if they want to. Um, the next question was um, second thing that will really help us out is if we can get some data that shows, yeah, they want inventory across colors and sizes. So let's just duplicate this, which duplicates the window and I'm going to delete the table. I still want the products that are current and that started this year because those are the products that they are working on. Now what we can do here is we have a product key which is unique so we can count that. So if I make a bar chart, drag that there, and I can drag the product key to values, and then we can do count distinct because there are some unique product keys. So I'll just put that here, and then I will go here, I will format it, I will turn on the labels, which tells me we have 195 um, products that are current that started in 2020. If I do 2010, see now they can go in, they can select whatever they want, but let's stick to what it is that they need right now. Now we wanted color, so let's do that. Let's drag it here. So we can do colors to the axis, then we can do, we can co copy that. Once again, I'm just going control C and control V. I do that a little bit quick, it's a habit, but you just mark the graph and you go control C, control V, and it, it makes a copy. Um, we had color and then we had size. Then I can drag in, I can replace the color. And now you can see already now it's quite easy to see the distribution of number of products across the colors and the sizes. And what's really great is that because this is dynamic, they can go in, they can click only black, they can only see how many products do they have per that. If they want to look at yellow, they can do that. If they want to look at a size, they can do that. So of course, you can respond with a SQL query that gives exactly what they're asking for, but this gives a lot more flexibility. And you can also notice here that there are some products that, some data which is missing product, uh, uh, which, there are some products which are missing sizes, which could be a data issue, um, which is something that you might wanna point out. Otherwise, this should be more than enough to give them some sort of idea of the distribution of their products across the colors and their sizes. So I'll re we'll rename that to question two. And the last question was regarding, I believe it was profits for the different products given that they sell them. So once again, I'm gonna just duplicate the previous page because it just helps me save a lot of time. So I'll go question three. Then I will remove this and I will make a table and we can actually go back we can take the table from the first page and we will just control C control V I'll remove the description we don't need the start date but I want to keep the product name and the model name then I will drag in the list price I will drag in what else can we use we have the list 
price, the dealer price. And then we have, what else? Do we have anything else that we can use? Dealer price, list price. Uh, stand up. Let's deal with these two. So let's say that the dealer price is what we pay to get it into our inventory and list price is what we sell it for. So I'm just gonna take the list price minus the dealer price um, and then I will use that to give some sort of idea of which products could give us potentially the highest profit given that we sell it. So then I can create a calculation, a measure. So you can see we have the list price and the deal price. So I will do a, let's call it, what is it? Uh, I'll just call it, which I will name upsell potential equals uh, the list price, so we can do sum list price minus the sum of deal price. So let's do that. And then what did I call it? Upsell potential. And I will drag that in. And you will see that now we get the upsell potential. And if I want to have the ones that have the highest upsell potential, I will sort it by that by clicking that column. And I can see that some of these are of course higher than others. So now it has been sorted by which one has the highest upsell potential. And of course they can go in and they can, uh, they can uh, sort this um, how they want. If they want to see the one with the lowest upsell potential, they can do that. If they want the ones with the highest, they want it sorted by certain product names, certain model names. Hey, if you, if you want to, you can even go in now. Um, let's keep it at that. You can, you can copy this, this filter and you can search for the model name and you can even tell them that, hey, I added a filter for you guys. If you guys want to filter down on certain model names and only focus on that when you guys are going through this. So it shows when you add more filters, if you come with suggestions that you can do this, you can do that. You're not only responding to what they're asking for, but you're also trying to prove that, hey, I understand what you guys are trying to do. I wanna shape this so that you guys get more flexibility to take even better decisions in the meeting which they are going to have about the products for this company. Those were some examples on how you can solve some interview case questions using Power BI. I hope that gave you some ideas on how you can apply your own skills in the future. If you like this video, then give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more videos on data and analytics, then subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.